we have two speakers here this evening, and they have between them about 70 years of experience with the underground gas storage operations. That's Patricia McPherson from Grassroots Coalition, and we also have Tom Williams from Citizens Coalition for a Safe Community. Uh, Tom is a gas and oil expert, and Patricia will be taking us on a uh, journey through the historical incidents leading up to current times about what's been going on with SoCal gas, underground gas storage operations. What he said about uh, Grassroots Coalition and Patricia McPherson, but also the Sierra Club's involvement in the oil and gas issues goes back um, 20 years as well. What I wanted to show you with this right off the bat is, and, and one of the first things we ever had to do <coughs> was to fight to determine that these gases are oil field gases. I mean, forget the Playa Vista site. Let's talk about this whole region. Um, everyone was always calling it, especially SoCal gas, that these are swamp gases, biogenic <laughs> gases. Well, we're going to go on a tour to see how they are not biogenic gases. They are all thermogenic gases through here. I've personally gone and sampled up in the lagoon area, which if you look at the end of Biota Lagoon, uh, there's a Curtis well there on that little island, if any of you are familiar with that neck of the woods, and there's a picture of the lagoon. Um, it leaks. Every day. It's constantly leaking. There are leaks all through here. I have an arrow there. We, I've got uh, isotopic analysis that I've done in this area, and this area, and this area, and this area. And I have documentation for so many of these other areas. There are just too many arrows to draw with all of the thermogenic gas, the oil field gases that are leaking out of this area. And in 2007, the CPUC um, did a uh, study. We, we had a litigation with SoCal Gas and Grassroots Coalition through the California Public Utilities Commission system. And in the report that they did as part of that litigation, they found that there was a greater than 50% chance that the gases leaking this far east were reservoir gases from fire Gas operations were shut down in 2010 with Dodger Order 1008 due to reservoir gas leakage in this area. Reservoir gas leakage in this area. Delray 10 has been a constant leaker. This is butts right up to apartments and condos right there. Um, and all of these wells right here. Delray 18 is a constant leaker. There are other wells throughout here that are always leaking over and over and over again. Okay, let's hit the slides. Look how gas took over these operations. They got a, a conditional use permit from the city of Los Angeles. Condition number 17, the underground gas pressure shall be kept sufficiently low so that there will be no escape of gases into the air above, above the ground. That didn't work out. Um, we have gases surfacing all over. And as a matter of fact, when uh, the government, when they first put this in in the 30s, they kept the pressures at about 700. And they know from studies that were done and that if they got above 700 PSI, pounds per square inch, the gases would leak. And they would leak out into the east, to the north, as this picture here, um, going back to slide one, it leaked all through the area surrounding the, uh, the operations. So they knew that. They knew it then. And when SoCal Gas took over, in order to make more money, they upped the pressures and the volumes of gas inside to 1,700 pounds per square inch, so the gas is migrating even further. Did they tell the city of Los Angeles this? No. Did they talk to Dogger about this? No. And at the time, they were approved for 240 acres only to store their gas. The conditional use grant does not waive the necessity of other required permits or licenses. The grant does not waive the necessity of other required permits or licenses. Um, no approval was ever given by the CPUC to expand their operations. They're required to get approval to expand the operations through the CPUC, through Dogger. That was never done. So, it is subject to revocation. The conditional use permit for the City of Los Angeles. Next slide. Here is the original 240 acres right here. 
And here's my own channel way up here. This is a map showing just the migration to the north that goes up into the Venice and Marina del Rey area. And when they upped the pressures, they just started escaping up there. But they knew, even here in 1955, they asked for additional space. SoCal asked for additional space. Funny they didn't ask for additional space underground, but it's the same thing. They needed to ask for that expansion, and they never did. They've gone way beyond the boundaries of approval. Next slide. This is a PRA, Public Record Act request, that we put in, I forget what year, 2004 or so, um, to uh, the, the Department of Conservation and Division of Oil and Gas. There is no record of any project expansion proposal, so there are no documents responsive to your request. You know? <laughs> 1986, no project approval by Dogger, only individual well permits. This is, happens to be a letter that Dogger also looked into this a little bit in 1986 and said, where's your approval for any of the expansions? Well, as it turns out, what they did was they said, Continue with your operations with the approvals on the individual permits that we've given you. But there's never been an actual approval for the expansion of the operations of SoCal Gas letting this gas migrate to the north. Another condition that says if things are altered significantly, they have to get an approval. Well, it still has not happened. And when you think about who owns the mineral rights up in the Venice area, some of it, some of it is owned by people that still have homes there. The thing that was done in uh, when they first started the, the field, um, it's uh, Chicago wrote and said that it would be considered a Class Four operation in Chicago, and they wouldn't allow it in a in a urban setting because it was too hazardous. So the city of Chicago warned the city of LA, um, and actually this was the Hersher Field that they were talking about, which Chicago did have, but it was set in a rural setting, okay. and it too leaked, and leaked into water wells, despite the low pressure operations they had there. Next slide. Here again is the 240 acres. Here's 1993 when we asked the Sierra Club, what's the uh, area of their uh, operations? And again, this is this small little area down here. The channel is up here. So it's basically like this. The only problem is that was not true. They knew it had already expanded everywhere. And here's our settlement, one of the discussions that uh, a document applied or SoCal Gas put out. And if you see this blue line, this is their sphere of influence that they talk about in 2008. So look at the difference between that, this, and this. And is this correct? God knows. How would we know? No one's checking. No one's looking. Next slide. Here are the areas that they have. This is called the main area where they have their storage. This is called the flats. It's also called the wetlands area. This is one of the SCG's old maps, which is kind of fun. This is called the town lot area or the town site area. And there may be a lot of people who live there. And this is called the gas cap area on the other side of, here's the marina channel going in here. This is over in the marina, gas cap area. Okay, next slide. Here's what we have underneath. We have aquifers, freshwater aquifers underlying the whole area out to the ocean. And Silverado, which is LA's major drinking water aquifer, is at the very base. And here's just a diagram showing the oil field gases coming out. And what's known as the 50 foot gravel up here is an old LA riverbed that is bouldered. So it acts as a, an easy conduit for all the gases to expand outward. So we have all of this expanding outward in conduits for gas. Next slide, please. Here is um, when we, they were calling it uh, biogenic gas. We worked with the Building and Safety Department in Los Angeles, and they brought in exploration technologies out of Texas because they chose a company that was outside of California to try and get away from conflict of interest. Exploration technologies came in, and red, this is the EIR for Playa Vista, right? This is Division of Oil and Gas and Geothermal Resources in 1993. 
talking about the Fairfax raw stress for less explosion, um, they said the fires were from decomposing organic mass. They also said the Playa Vista site, and that's this line, and they also said regarding the Playa Vista site, there are no shallow zones or pockets of gas that can seep to the surface of Playa Vista. <laughs> <laughs> that's 1993, and we already know from 1985 we have documents with, with Dogger records knowing that these gases are escaping and migrating to the north and to the east. They know that it's um, coming to the surface. I'll show you those in a minute. But here is exploration uh, technologies verifying that it's the thermogenic gas that is coming up through the soils and the water because it contains ethane, butane, BTEX chemicals that they diagnosed that cryogenic gases don't have. So, the presence of ethane, propane, and butane to confirm the presence of thermogenic gas in the water wells also. So it's in the aquifers. Next slide. Here we have ETI stating that SoCal Gas knows that it's a common occurrence that their well casings act as conduits for gas to vent to the surface. But they're not, that's not legal. They're not allowed to let that happen. He also said, there's no question there's justification for conducting an investigation for casing leakage associated with the gas storage field. Now doesn't that sound like the current CCST report that says because of all the leakage and lack of containment that there needs to be a, a full-on study of all of SoCal Gas's operations? Well, this is ETI back in 2001. And ETI put forward a list of questions to SoCal Gas which SoCal Gas did not answer, did not participate because they said it was too onerous to own this. Next slide. All right, we know from the Regal study that was done in 1953 of all of the gas migration. This isn't a no-brainer. SoCal Gas isn't going to deny the fact that their gases are migrating. But SoCal Gas didn't acknowledge this to the city of L.A. until 1993. Not until 1993. I mean, think about it, 1985, or was it 86, that Docker didn't have any kind of, was asking, where's your approval for any of your operations? So we've got years and decades going by that SoCal Gas is operating out there with no one paying attention to them. There's a woman that was uh, sued for uh, personal injuries, health injuries, that lives right next to it, up on the bluff, and it, uh, the judge in that case said for the past 55 years, neither Division of Oil and Gas or the PUC have been paying any attention to contamination through the soils or the waters. But SoCal Gas also fails to tell the city that no expansion uh, approvals were ever requested or garnered. And SoCal Gas failed to tell the city of LA in that conditional use permit that the migration was occurring due to SCG's decision to increase the gas pressure and the injection volumes. Next one. Okay, storage zone problems. Possible sources of gas migration to the surface. Uh, there are at least five different possible sources of gas to the surface at Playa del Rey. This is the Lorio report, which I have the, uh, if you want to look at the casings, or the well leakage diagrams back there. The well leakage diagrams that I have back there show casing leaks, casing shoe leaks, leaks from lower to upper zones. Who is it that said there are no zones in Playa del Rey? And yet here is SCG's own engineer discussing this specifically about the Playa del Rey site. These are other ways that it leaks, and this talks about different uh, sections and areas of the SoCal gas Playa del Rey field itself. They have different areas where they have, and, and this also talks about uh, leaks to the surface, even in this document. This is, this is an 85 document. Also, they knew. Next. Um, this is something that my mentor, Bernard Andrews, who's a uh, gas migration expert, um, he put together this uh, summary of statements made that have been constantly made by SoCal Gas, which is there is no vertical gas migration, um, there is very little benzene, if any at all, in their gas stream. Next slide. We'll go on to this. 
Here is a report done by SoCal Gas showing levels of, and by the way, they said 40 parts per million or less. And this is 139, 137, 236. So we're not telling the truth here. And yet their top level people are saying some natural gas contains no benzene. And the most benzene we normally find is 40 parts per million. Ooh. Next slide. All right, here we go into helium. This is a document from SoCal Gas, again, 1975. Um, we have multiple wells, 26 wells, helium's present. Helium's a marker that SoCal Gas uses to show that it's their gas. The field doesn't have helium in it. It was brought in with the gas that was piped in from Texas and Oklahoma and other areas. So when they find it, the game they like to play is that, well, it's too high, it's too low, it's not ours. Surface casing, in a casing of 26 wells. This document talks about reservoir gas surfacing in the flats, the bluffs, and north of Island Channel at Delray 17. This is 1975, and yet they tell the city of LA this isn't happening. Next slide. And we have here somebody that is concerned. Are we there as good neighbors preventing water encroachment, pressure buildup in the old town lot field? Or are we in fact remedying a problem of our own creation, pressure buildup due to gas migration? This is talking about in the Venice area and in the marina area. These guys know this. This is an old a 1980 document. Okay, and this is talking about Delray 18, which is also in the uh, uh, closer to the Biona area, but the shoe link, the shoe links, it comes to the surface. They knew all of this surfacing. Next slide. That's okay. Here we have helium level over here. It says Delray 10, Delray 10, which this one was abandoned. But you know what? It's also inside all those condominiums. Who's checking it now? These are, and this is, I could go on and on and on, pages in different years of this happening. This says um, bar hole, bar hole, bar hole. Bar holes are things that they put in the ground and they test away from the wellhead itself. This is all helium and, and the gases of their reservoir gases that they're finding coming up around Delray 10. Next slide. This is a whole list of wells that they have. Next slide. Leaking and leaking to the surface. Um, here's another document that says, uh, Oh, this is actually the start of a legal document because they're trying to figure out if we allow this to reflood, which it's now at about 2,400, and we don't know if it's gone even beyond that in the uh, Venice area, that we will call it naturally occurring phenomenon, that the water is just reflooding. <laughs> but when the water refloods into an area, what does it do to all that gas that's stuck in there? It's going to push it up through any orifice it can. And this whole document, go to the next one, um, and the next one, that's the casing lease and stuff. And this is, by the way, again, here's Delray 10. This is what shut down the field in 2010, was uh, leakage that they know is reservoir gas, which didn't make the news any more than RGC did for a while. Um, next slide, please. Um, uh, oh, this is the liabilities for the Troxel well, also. Troxel is a well that I just talked to a guy next door to it. He was totally unaware that SoCal Gas had, had any storage operations directly underneath them. But they are going to say any possible hydrocarbons or water escaping its surface locations will occur solely through wells that are not properly abandoned. Well, and they're going to say those aren't our wells. So what are they doing? They're shifting the liability. They're trying to shift the liability to the homeowner who is a, a neophyte. They know nothing of what they're buying into. SoCal Gas doesn't tell you uh, this information when you're buying into a home. They tell you you've got an abandoned well and one thinks that it's going to last forever when in fact they leak and they leak over and over and over again and we have a slew of documents that show it happening. Next slide. The public needs to know if SoCal Gas implemented the strategy in this legal memo, which is talking about investigate abandoned well histories in the townside Troxel Delray area. It also talks about monitoring in the groundwater, things that we asked for in our settlement agreement. Lorio, 
Uh, their engineer recommends having all of this kind of monitoring done. Well, they agreed to it in our settlement agreement, but it hasn't been enforced by the Public Utilities Commission. Okay, I think I'm done. It's just that how hazardous is too hazardous? People need to know, and we need to be able to ask these questions and get these answers. I'm Dr. Tom Williams. I work with an organization called the Citizens Coalition for a Safe Community. Over 10 years of operating in the Inglewood oil field because they had two big blowouts and had to evacuate people. And that got the county supervisors attention. We've gone over most of the evidence. We have a catastrophe. Anyone ever heard of Porter Ranch? <laughs> My interest is how to avoid the catastrophe that may be. Okay, we can start with actions now because we have a very favorable environment politically, economically, and a few others. So you have a lot of people that are in the same position as you. And it's a question now as to what to do. As Patricia noted, there are a whole bunch of state, county, city agencies involved in this matter. The first time occupied position of the Oil and Gas Administrator for the City of Los Angeles in the Office of Oil and Gas Administration in the Board of Public Works, official city position for somebody dealing with oil and gas. First time in about 20 years. Inglewood Oil Field, Lisio Canyon, Porter Ranch, Blanco, and this guy, the oil and gas administrator, he has basically shut down the Blanco site and he has required a major modification of what is called the Jefferson site. So we have a chance. <laughs> the history of all of the failures of the oil and gas industry is long. Has anyone ever been to the Page Museum? <laughs> Did you go out and look at the oil and gas? <laughs> the gas is boiling up. Yeah. Hey, there are fault that oil and gas are coming up. When we had the Ross Dress for Less explosion, I was there for 72 hours straight time. They allowed me to sleep on the bus ditch. Why? Because they had gas blowing up. It wasn't the gas company's gas, though. It was overpressurizing of the oil reservoirs. And 22 people went to the hospital. Okay, what is well? It's a hole in the ground through which you produce oil gas. How is it safe? It ain't. In 1958, I spent two months on an oil rig in eastern Kansas and decided to go to college. So, thank God I did. Because the number of digits on hands is a good indicator of my safety. And if they're not willing to be safe on the rig, it's difficult to be safe from after you pull the rig off. So, there are several types of wells. The most important well, nobody claims responsibility for it. Nobody gets paid for it. Nobody wants to touch it because if you touch an orphan well, basically you're committing a million dollars of your money to fixing it. So in Montebello, the CPUC shut down the gas storage facility there because they had had 15 houses bought by the gas company with ratepayers' expenses, because buying a house at 150 to 250 thousand is a lot cheaper than redoing the well at a million million plus. So it's all in economics. We have basically three different casings in a well. Each one of them provides gas and/or oil up. And each one is supposed to be contained. 
There's supposed to be a tubing in the middle of it for many wells, but nobody uses that because it's too expensive to maintain <laughs> and it slows down the injection and the production from the well. Excellent. Okay. We're in. Well, in the state of California, most of your oil and gas is from around 2,000 to 8,000 feet below us. Below that, the gas company loves to have gas storage and eventually carbon dioxide sequestration would be down there. You want to get it as deep and out of the way as possible. So, uh, question is, going through all this property, one of the th differences is, you ever heard of land grants? <laughs> the Mexican and the Spanish government, the Mexican government granted land to various entities, including the surface and all mineral rights in those. Those were accepted by the U.S. government when we acquired California. So, you might say, they learned very quickly that oil, in the 1890s to 1920 was a valuable product. It was everywhere. Excellent. So who owns it? You got a whole bunch of different categories, but it's basically you don't have to own the subsurface in order to own the surface. And the important thing there is this guy here, LA County Assessor. I guarantee the LA County Assessor knows everything. Who leases, who owns, who, owns, who leases out, who buys the lease, and various things like that. Why? Because, what? You ever heard of oil depletion allowance? Some people have. Because it's a taxable thing. And I once was refused entry to a county assessor's meeting up in Santa Barbara in conjunction with an oil and gas conference that was going on. Outsiders were not allowed. Why? <laughs> Money! <laughs> yes? Okay, here's the patchwork under us right now. There's a whole bunch of different types of ownership. SoCal Gas owns some subsurface properties, so they lease some surface some subsurface properties, and might say the only people that really know is either the county assessor or what Patricia called Dodger. Division of Oil, Gas, and Geothermal Resources, Division of the Department of Conservation, a state agency. Next slide. And when you talk about pathways, in the Metro Rail Red Line Phase 1, we had to bore a tunnel through an oil field. We had magnetometers going out in front of the tunnel just to make sure we could find steel cases. And has anyone been to the Wilshire Courtyard on Carfax? Mm -hmm. Don't. <laughs> because Parsons Corporation, my former employer, we designed the membrane that went into there in order to protect it from gas. But one Saturday when nobody was working, we videotaped the whole thing. It was passing gas from the liner into the excavation. But then I heard blah, 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 blah. <laughs> went over to the side, and here were 55 gallon drums casing that had been cut through by the excavator. Here was a power pole that was stuck into the 55 gallon drums. And here was a piece of big piece of leather showing that in the old days, how they abandoned wells. You suck everything out, you pull all the steel out, you do as much as you can, you dump all the gravel you have down the hole, and then you put a plug in it. A plug, power pole, and leather in order to seal it off. It's in the east side of the Wilshire Courtyard Foundation. Wow. But, but you can see here, and basically the surface property owners, that is 50 foot wide by 150 foot deep, maybe, 
Each one of them had a well. And if you're at Alvarado in Wilshire, every house had a well. Because that might say the subsurface property ownership had not been clarified. So you have these things. Leaks. Every one of these had leak. Next slide. How do you get put the gas in and out? You have to inject it in, and then you withdraw it. And my say gas company has these. But there are a lot of wells along here, and eventually, if you pressurize here, it sends out a wave of pressure in the surrounding zones. Next slide. So my say if you have any of these around, you may have a problem. Next slide. So, and uh, current oil production, they have what is called enhanced oil recovery. That means you pump oil, or you pump water and or gas into the ground, it pushes the oil over and you produce it out of the well. This is the most common practice in all of downtown LA, South Central, the Louisiana Park area, all of these use the same basic thing. You pump something in here and it pushes oil over here and you pull it out there. What, do we, what actions do we need to take? And my saying, I always include it versus them. Because in Lysio Canyon, we had, had a phrase, shut it down. I said, but there are so many of them. It's not it, it's them. So we changed it to shut them down. So what's the evidence? We've had raw store, we had Montebello gas field, we had Olive Street blowout, which evacuated 30 some odd people out of an apartment when oil was boiling up in Olive Street, downtown LA. Uh, we've had the Englewood blowouts, which CCESC helped with, and we sued. There are several things going on right now. Uh, basically, the smaller production size, that is 20 to 40 to 60 wells on a two acre plant <coughs> are being regulated. Quiet. Next slide. Uh, we have a lot of evidence and area oil fields. We have a lot of oil fields in the city of LA. <laughs> Okay, what has been done for that? Well, methane rules. Why did we have methane rules? That was because of the raw stress for less store blowout and 22 people in the uh, hospital. We have the community standards district for the Inglewood oil field, which has been functioning for 10 years. We had a lot of things. Gas company usually, they just accuse others and keep it quiet and say, we're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. We're working. <laughs> Next one. So, uh, what to do about it? Main thing is make sure you're being informed. Yes. Then, hey, start dealing with the city government. Oh, uh, you want to talk about wells? Do you, do you know anybody that lives in any of these addresses here in Marina Del Rey? Tell them they have a well. Wow. And that's an orphan well. Nobody is claims yeah. responsibility. These four are ones that are knowingly still there, never been abandoned. So if you know anybody there, maybe they have interest in it. So where is your well? Where's the pad? Where's the field? Down below us, there's one well that was abandoned out this way from this building wow. here. So they were everywhere. Next. Uh, and we need to have an organization through the city to basically close down these well fields in the city of Los Angeles. Only in the city of Los Angeles. Yeah. And excellent. Okay, uh, we have what is called a specific plan, and the oil and gas administrator of the city of Los Angeles is pushing to have 
specific plan. He got his first one done with the Jefferson site, which requires them to enclose various things and get something done now. It's the first time that this has been done in the city of Los Angeles. Similar to what we're doing in the LA County. All of these slides will be available online anytime. No copyright intended. There's a whole bunch of best practices that can be done right now. From the LA County, Inglewood field, we've been doing a lot. We are upgrading the community standards district with new technology. Have actions and do a lot of call. And, and let's say start next Wednesday. <laughs> Tomorrow's too early, but next Wednesday will be fine after the Easter holiday. This is the Jefferson site. And the city oil and gas administrator has issued a specific plan for this. These are apartments. You think you have a bed. <laughs> here's an apartment, here's an apartment. They have a second floor, and you can watch all of the drilling going on at the same time. Oh, 60 feet away from your window. That's all. Oh, no. I mean, oh, here's one. If you ever get on Pico, uh, stop near Genesee, and then there's a 130 foot high building there, are no windows. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? The Fairfax district over here got the driller to fully enclose the whole thing. God help you if you're inside, if there's a big blow up. And oh, by the way, this is the gas processing facility next to the neighborhood. That's all.